Hey everybody, you're watching Bull Boom at Bear Bus BX4, back with another dose of economic reality. My name is JJ. Um, we're going to talk about some big disruptions that could be coming up very, very soon. And we're going to talk about what's going to be happening this week. This is a pretty big week. We have the uh, the Fed coming out and making some announcements as usual. Um, we're going to listen and give you analysis on what I think they're saying, even though what they're saying usually doesn't hold true. Just few weeks later sometimes everything changes uh, you know like the Fed they're gonna cut rates now when they said previously they were gonna keep rates higher for longer of course higher for longer how much higher and how much longer <laughs> nobody knew uh, long long to them might have been three months it might have been a year well it's been over a year since the rates have risen some people would say that that's pretty long but they use all these terms that you can't really pinpoint exactly what they mean now, how long is is longer for higher and how much higher uh crazy right so you have to try to decipher these things to try to figure out where the economy is headed um but think about this if the economy was doing just fine there was no underlying problems why would the central bankers even be talking about cutting rates right so it doesn't make sense doesn't add up doesn't doesn't pass the sniff test right so let's get into some news here we've got some some possible supply chain disruptions and more inflationary uh, risks out there as uh, here's what just happened recently here uh, oil prices just jumped after an attack um, a drone attack killed several US troops I told you right here on this channel even last year when uh, Ukraine and um, Russia the whole thing started I said this is going to expand we saw of course what's happened in Israel uh, Palestine now we're involved with Iran, Iraq. We've got troops on the ground, troops getting killed now. It's just going to get worse. And I wouldn't be surprised if this evolved into some sort of, uh, I don't want to say World War III because that's an extreme, um, an extreme thing to happen. But I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, with the things that are happening right now economically and globally, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we did see World War III and we've got, you know, basically half the world now with the BRICS nations, half the world going against the U.S. dollar. Just that in itself is an act of war. And uh, I said we're going to be involved financially, and now we've got troops on the ground. Now we've got casualties. And this is going to escalate. And it's not just me saying that. Um, let's bring this up here. And I'm not just making this stuff up. Look at this. Biden vows retaliation after three Americans killed. Dozens wounded in drone attack by Iran-backed militia in Jordan. All right. And, uh, you know, it's not uh, a good thing to see stuff like this. I'm not happy to have to report this, but this is what's happening. This is the direction that we kind of knew things were going to be headed uh, once we saw the initial conflicts break out. Um, got Fed rate cut decision could be coming uh, in March or the decision could be coming to cut rates in March. We're going to see what this next meeting holds But it, that wouldn't surprise me I mean a lot of people would be surprised if the Fed cut rates because on one side of their mouth They're saying that everything's fine. The consumer's strong. There's no problems uh, But then they're at the same time. They're talking about we need to cut rates, right? So again, you know, you've got to kind of piece these things together figure out what makes sense. What doesn't make sense? Um, but here we go. I wanted to bring this up here uh, this is interesting. The Fed prepares for a banking crisis while telling Americans the economy is strong. What do we always talk about here? Uh, they're doing manipulations with the banks right now. Uh, they're propping up the banks. There's a big rescue program happening right now. We also have this um, proposal to force U.S. banks to utilize the Fed's discount window. So there's people out there, even writers from this uh blog right here Eurasia review saying the Fed is preparing for a crisis uh, while telling everyone the economy is strong so just what we talk about here right they're, they're not doing what they're saying and they're not saying what they're doing and you know you have to just put two and two together you know we wouldn't even be talking about rate cuts if something big wasn't happening we wouldn't see this bank funding emergency funding program now going on 10 months after the bank failed, uh, several banks failed back in 2023, back in March. Uh, we wouldn't see these things if everything was fine. So while on one hand, everything looks fine, everything looks normal, calm, uh, no issues, no concerns, uh, I would definitely be ready 
uh, for something big to pop off between the wars, the global conflicts, the financial situation, the banks. The banks are in big, big trouble. You wouldn't know it by looking at the profits. There was a couple banks out there that didn't have very good profits, very good earnings. But uh, for the most part, you know, they, on paper, these banks are looking good if you just look at the mainstream paper. If you look behind the scenes, though, at the underwater assets, at the amount of uh, loans that are given out compared to how much they have in reserves, you'll know that there's big trouble on the horizon. Uh, the U.S. savings rate dropped again. Let's go ahead and bring this up. This is the personal savings rate. We like to talk about this because this is the backbone of the U.S. economy. This is the U.S. consumer. And if you look at the statistics out there and the gauge of the economy, it's uh, mostly consumer spending. It's also deficit spending from the government. But a big part of it, a bulk of it is actually consumer spending. How are consumers doing? Well, we had record holiday spending. So to many people that meant, or to some people that meant, the consumer's strong, the consumer's resilient, right? Well, take a look at what happened. And uh, we, again, we said this was gonna happen and it did. Uh, this is the savings rate. And we saw it increase uh, from September to October. It went from 3.8% to 4.1%. Uh, stayed steady from October to November. And then, of course, as we talked about with the holiday spending, people loading up on debt, swiping credit cards like crazy over the holidays, it dropped back down to 3.7. Now it's lower than what it was in September. So the savings rate continues to show big, big trouble. Now, what is this? This is the percent of household incomes that's left over at the end of the month after paying all their expenses. And we know that things are getting more expensive even though they're telling us that inflation is easing, it just means that costs are still going up just more slowly than they were previously. So naturally, you're going to see the savings rate continue to erode. Now, the fact that it went up a little bit between September, October, and November, that made some people think that everything is fine, no problems. But we saw what happened in December. And I think it's going to continue to decline from here because we're not seeing costs come down. We're not seeing inflation become under control. Uh, even though they're talking about rate cuts. So pretty interesting. Uh, please let me know what you think about that. Was it just a holiday dip? And are people going to start saving more money now going forward? Well, I seriously doubt it. With all the new debt that was taken out over the holidays and the total in the fourth quarter was another record, um, I don't see how people are going to actually pay this down and have more money left over unless the employers out there start giving bigger and bigger raises. right? But even that's not going to fix the problem because as they give bigger raises, more inflation is going to be swelling uh, underneath and you're going to see higher costs uh, down the road. Now let's talk about Wolf Street here. Wolf Street put this out today. The U.S. debt to GDP ratio worsens further despite solid economic growth. Remember, economic growth is people taking on debt, government deficit spending, uh, borrowed money. The U.S. government debt is measured in current dollars, meaning not adjusted for inflation. So we compare it to GDP in current dollars, not adjusted for inflation. The hope is that current dollar GDP grew faster than current dollar debts. So that burden of the debt on the economy would shrink and that astronomical debt to GDP ratio would decline. But no, I'll let you read the rest of that article. Just pull up the latest article out of uh, Wolf Street. He describes it very well. But I wanted to bring up this chart here. And this is the debt to GDP ratio here in the U.S. And um, bring it up a little larger here. This is outrageous. This is insane. Let me move myself out of the way here. Look at after the financial crisis, how we spiked upward. And basically, we never came down. There's been some ups and downs. And then it spiked again, of course, in 2020. Came down a little bit, but now we're on our way back up. All right, so what does this tell you? This tells you that we never really recovered from the financial crisis. It may look like we recovered, but a lot of this was just a debt binge. It was throwing money at the problem. It's dropping rates to rock bottom for over 10 years. And uh, none of the problems are being fixed. They're just being glossed over or papered over. And some people call it kicking the can down the road here. But how are we doing, everybody? Hope you're doing good. I got my uh, green tea latte. So I'm doing okay. I usually don't go to Starbucks because it's cheaper to make things at home, but we were out driving around and they had two to one, two to one. How do small coffee shops stay in business when Starbucks is everywhere and they offer two to one deals if you have the app? My wife has, my wife has the app, so of course I'm not gonna turn down a free drink. 
even if it's Starbucks. So I kind of failed there. I told myself I was not going to give business to Starbucks, but it's really hard not to shop at these, um, you know, mega companies that have a stranglehold on the, uh, uh, they have a bulk of the market share. Uh, it's really hard to undercut the prices of some of these places. Imagine not shopping at the Target or the Walmarts. Imagine not going to your preferred coffee shop. I like to make coffee at home, but we were out driving around, so I had to go there. And two to one coupon, you know. So everybody, hope you like this report. What do you think about this debt to GDP skyrocketing uh, chart here? It lets us know some big things. It lets us know some things might not be good uh, going on behind the scenes. What do you think about what's going to happen this week? Is it going to be a rate cut announcement? I don't know if they're going to be that obvious about it. I think they're going to put a few words out there. They're going to make people scratch their heads trying to figure out what they're talking about while leaving the door open for rate cuts. That's what I think. Uh, please let me know what you think down in the comments. What do you think about that article uh, that the Fed is preparing for a bank crisis while telling Americans the economy is strong? Sounds pretty uh, on the point, doesn't it? All right, everybody. Keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.